Humanity can be a many splendid thing. From curing polio to pansexual butter orgies, there's no end to the beautiful things that human beings can accomplish. But it doesn't feel that way lately, does it? More and more, when you turn and veer into your phone or listen to the AM ham radio, you're bombarded with horrifying stories. What's worse is you may feel complicit in the suffering of others. Say, if the taxes the government takes from you go in part to fund the suffering of other human beings overseas, how can this happen? when the majority of the constituents of the politicians elected to represent the people find a lot of what their own government is doing to be horrific. Don't we live in a democracy? Aren't politicians paid by us to represent us? Then why does it not feel like it? The answer is Marfus. Yes, Marfus. A small demonic brain parasite distributed globally through 5G radio towers Marfus serves only the Dark Lord Satan and regularly releases secret brain chemicals to pacify us on a regular basis into being complicit for the great and calamitous badity that's wrong. A lot of terms are incredibly loaded, so I'm going to try my best to talk about an economic system while being as intentionally vague as possible, enlightened centrism and all that. Say, as a thought experiment. There were generations of rulers whose complete control over society was determined exclusively through their bloodline, with decades of blood being spilt under their control. Incestuous kings and queens whose qualification to govern didn't go beyond coming out of a divine womb. Say their system of ownership of property and wealth was bestowed only to those other divine families of proportionate power, and that all other members of society had to work or die on their behalf for the good of a kingdom. Now, say there was a revolution by the people at the bottom, who realized there were more of them than they'll ever be paid soldiers to defend the incest monarchy. And in the revolution, a new course for civilization is charted, one in which there'll be equality, egality, and if all goes well, some goddamn fraternity too. Under this new system, anyone has the power to own or sell things. Now, those who already have a lot of stuff will be in a decided advantage, but still they can pay those who don't have anything to make things for them, giving them something new in the process. A job. No longer are serfs toiling for lords in a fiefdom, but employees working for employers. Then, say under this new system, everyone gets equal voting power to elect their leaders. Well, maybe not everyone at first. Half the population is deemed unfit for the sin of being women, and those not in proximity to capital, aka non-white landowning men, for example, are also not allowed to participate fully yet in certain parts of the world, but who knows what a couple civil rights movements or civil wars could bring. Eventually, fast forward a couple hundreds of years, and a few indigenous genocides and North Atlantic slave trades later, and you've got a post-industrial revolution world built on extraction and sale of energy in the form of oil, and the ownership of wealth in the form of property, Corporations form and gain more rights and protections. Banks and lending institutions become massive and powerful, both accumulating a lot of capital that we were talking about before. Everyone with capital can hire those without, and if they sell what those people make for them at a higher profit than they pay their employees, they can become bigger and more successful capitalists. I, I mean, job creators. If they hire machines to replace humans, they can make more money. Or if they can pay poorer humans in poorer countries to make the same things that they could make at home, they can become even more powerful. If these groups and companies can hire lobbyists to speak on their rights on the behalf of corporations, then under the same democratic process, those who have had the ability to vote and form society's laws for a long time will have quite a bit more power, and those who don't have as many encounters with state power due to imaginary attributes that we call race will have even more power, and in some cases corporations that aren't even human beings will have the power to influence the entire democratic process. That's advertising. As a nation, we discovered the more different jobs that can be created for 185 million people, the stronger our economy. Also, the more taxes we can pay to a free government, fighting for its life in a half-free world. Taxes we know come from jobs and wages, from the manufacture of products and profits, from the day-to-day -day movement of money in circulation. And quite simply, every dollar spent in advertising generates many dollars in taxes. If the manufacturing of weapons is no longer something done by the military or by proxy the government, and is then done by private companies who can profit from war, and those same companies are allowed to be publicly traded, 
so more people with capital and power can make more money from the war profiteering, well, it might become really, really hard for the citizens of that country, even if they outnumber those with capital by a monstrous margin, to stop or change this system. The power of the system lies in capital, after all. That's why they call it capital. <laughs> the United States has more mass shooters per capita than any other developed nation, and also has the largest lobbying group on the behalf of guns and arms manufacturers than any other country. It spends more on healthcare, it gets worse results than any other rich nation, and surprisingly has insurance companies lobbying more than any other country. The dangers of social media have been well known for a long time, as have monopolization, yet very little actual legislation or antitrust laws are effectively utilized towards big tech, because again, they spend lots and lots and lots of money on lobbying. This is why the whole system can feel broken. Everyone might be really sad that thousands of kids may be forcibly starved by a country that is militarily supported by the United States, yet despite the majority of the population opposing it, business continues unabated. Because, in a system where capital equals power, more capital can equal more power. Now that's just a thought experiment, so don't feel too bad. It's not the world that you live in, or at least not completely. And here's the good news. It's actually not completely hopeless. For you see, there are still instances where grassroots political campaigns that have the support of direct action of the people are capable of beating far more financed political competitors. Like, it looks like we won an election. <laughs> Money doesn't always equal democratic power. Things like direct action, mass protests, and good old-fashioned door-to-door canvassing can help people break free from a system designed to oppress them. It just takes people waking up to how the world really works to see it and want to do something to change it. Not that any of this has to do anything with the video you're watching. And that this was just a thought experiment. And at the end of the day, we here worship Marfus. Oh, praise Marfus, our dark lord. Howdy, everybody. I just wanted to let you know that for the cost of a cup of coffee, you can unlock bonus uncensored episodes of Mind Explosions by going to patreon.com slash the serfs. Our videos couldn't exist without your support, and all our content is released early to our Patreon subscribers, as well as a ton of extra content you can't get anywhere else. Please like, subscribe, and thumbs up this channel, and if you're feeling extra perky, share it anywhere you think people would like to see or learn from our videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We first want to give a shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. This program is produced thanks to the generous support of our Patreon supporters. Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hegbar Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multi Mondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quite 185, Richard Bomey, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, and Words Greenwood. As well as every other person you see on the screen right now, this show would not be possible without them. And if you want to join these wonderful people who make this entire program possible, simply go to patreon.com slash the service and you can unlock uncensored and bonus episodes and, you know, help us exist.